Welcome back to the epicenter. Today's guest is Dr. Narisa Chavudu Ao. She's the CEO and founder of KogoPay. Um, she's also the CEO and founder of Smart Money Limited. She's a woman in tech, uh, global award winner from Startup 2019. She's also a WinTrade global award winner from 2021. Um, also a Glo global award winner for FinTech and clearly a leading figure in global banking and finance. Dr. Narisa. Sawadika. Sawadika. Welcome to Epicenter. Nice to be here. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm so excited to, to have this opportunity. Um, you know, I heard you speaking at uh, Bloomberg Live a couple That's weeks how ago. That's we met. That's how we met. Well, we didn't meet in person, but I thought, like, you're going to be amazing to get on uh, Epicenter, and I'm glad uh, you, you were able to uh, make time for this. This is mine. Thank you Yes. So, much. so we got uh, a lot to cover today. Um, some really great um, things that you've been doing in your career and also for, um, for the world, right? And so let, let's kind of, let's start back into the early days, okay? Um, we could say you're one of the early internet visionaries, right, in this region because you learned how to build a website, what was it, uh, back in 99 or 2000? 1999, that long time ago, <laughs> when uh, I was a student. When you were a student. Mm -hmm. So you were studying a PhD at that yeah, time. Yeah. Um, tell us about this journey. Like, wh why build a website? Like, why were you doing a PhD? Why I did, do, they did my PhD? Um, I was a lecturer before. Mm -hmm. If you want to do business, you don't need to. But I was a lecturer. That's why I have to do my PhD. So mm -hmm. I can teach master's students or PhD students. Yeah, that's, that's already the reason why uh -huh. I did my PhD, yeah. Uh -huh. and, but y why, why did you learn how to build a website, code a website, you know, what was... Um, I always interested in new things. Uh -huh. It's something new, technology, I always, what are you doing? So I always jump into uh, understanding, learning, and involved, mm -hmm. and want to do something about that. Mm -hmm. So that dot-com boom, you remember that time? Yes, 99. What are they doing? What are they doing? So I want to do mine as well. So I started from... Uh, thinking about something I can do well with, like compared to other people, mm -hmm. because I'm from Thailand. Right. I uh, that time I was living in the UK, so I had to do something about Thailand. That people love going to Thailand. A lot of British mm -hmm. people love to go to Thailand. So I should build something about Thailand, Thai restaurants in the UK. Imagine that time if you want to go and find Thai restaurant near where I live, I don't know where to go. So mm -hmm. I just have to get the database of Thai restaurants and also uh, information about Thailand. So people who live in UK can search and find out about information about us. So that was mostly for people in UK looking for Thai things in yeah, UK. Thai restaurants, traveling to Thailand, mm -hmm. and that's how it started. So you were actually like almost like a, a travel portal Something of sorts. like that, yeah, yeah? because I... I know that, wow, a lot of British people when I t who I talked to, they've been to Thailand or wanted to go to Thailand. Mm -hmm. So I found my, like, kind of... You found your niche? Niche. <laughs> and, and how did that website do? Um, you know what? It did very well. Wow. When I went to Tourism Authority of Thailand with my version that I did it myself, like, I learned PHP from my British friend, mm -hmm. engineering friend. And um, I went to Tourism Authority of Thailand in London and asked for information because I didn't have all the information I need, mm -hmm. like Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, you know, all information about provinces, right. what to do, where to go. And I met someone called Chris Lee. He's the um, manager of Tourism Authority of Thailand. He's British, but he mm -hmm. worked for TAT. They love my website, could you believe it? Wow. And they pay me, when I was a student at that time, 500 pounds per month to use my website. And they launched it as the official website of Tourism Authority of Thailand. Wow. That's We're going to have to find a, a, a picture of that uh, website and, <laughs> and put it up on the... the oh, the yeah, you have to find it. Yeah. I Very think old one. Yeah, well, that, that was web one day, right? Yeah, so. and I sold it to them a few years after. But oh. they changed it now. They use other names. It used to be Thai Smile, mm. that's the UK. This is 90, 2000. Imagine that Thai Smile Airlines after me. So right. I still own ThaiSmile.com. Wow, that was even Thai Smile Dentist. Wow, and you know airlines. Yes. People thought I owned the airline. I, I actually thought you owned the airline. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> the Thai Airways. So you sold the website mm. to the tourist authority of, of Thailand in UK. That's a long time. That was your first yeah. exit then. Well, but not a lot of money, right? Well, you know what? It, it yeah, doesn't matter how true. much. It's yeah, the first it's exit, oh, right? That's true. Yes. That's, that's true. So that's like 
maybe the the would that be maybe the foundation of you discovering that you can be an entrepreneur? Yeah, when I was 16. Oh, what happened at 16? When I was at the Mudum Success School, you know, one of the best high school in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Moha. I don't know, it's a year... What year wait. five? No, Moha is Moha? not Moha. <laughs> 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 the second last year bef before you finish to okay. go to uni. When I'm about 16, uh -huh. okay, we have a group of friends who want to do something together. Mm -hmm. Eight people, mm -hmm. eight students. We want to sell tickets mm -hmm. to friends in a high school to go to the club on Sunday mm. afternoon. Mm -hmm. 200 baht. 200 baht to go to the club. Uh, so we want to rent um, the hotel. What's the name of the hotel near uh, Central, Central La Pau? Hi um, Hyatt. Hyatt. At that time, yeah, it was oh, a long, long time, time ago. ago. And uh, eight of us, so we want to get some money from our parents and organize this. And then from eight, Everyone like, mm, it's not going to work. We, yeah. try to, we try to talk to friends and not many people want to buy that time. Yes. So we end up three of us, one girl and two boys. We say, we have to continue. And we did. And we, we sold out. People have to queue up. Wow. That many, many years ago. And you know how much we, we got each per person. Over 100,000 baht. Wow. Could you believe it? We are 16. 16, 100,000 baht. That's my first entrepreneur. <laughs> so y you, you knew that you could make money already. Yeah, you knew but how we to make fun. money. We had fun. And, no. had fun. and while having fun, which is very important, right? I think what I learned is we took a risk. Uh huh. And we didn't give up. And, you know, we try and we have fun. If it, mm. if it didn't work, we just say sorry to our parents and right. just pay them. Pay them back. Pay them back. <laughs> when if we go up. If you can. I'll pay you when I grow up. Yeah, that's right. my first um, ever. This is so you, you've talked about your Thai roots, and obviously you've been living in, in UK for quite some time now. 26 years. 26 years, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you probably are already forming um, some kind of like understanding between mm -hmm. East and West technology companies in the UK or, or in Europe and, and technology here in, in Asia and specifically in Thailand. What would you say is like the difference between the mindsets in, in these two um, parts of the world? I think British people are quite conservative. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure European, you probably can tell me more. I, I love how you said conservative. Really? It's more like British? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, to, to introduce them to the new things, that's what I'm trying to do, QR code payment. Yes. Goodness me, how many years have you used QR code payment? Oh, forever. But to start it there, and we, we could, they get used to using the contact list now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, very hard to mm -hmm. penetrate the market and introduce it. So we have to do something. So what we plan to do, like, especially QR code payment. Mm -hmm. When you come to Thailand, I know they or Asia, hey, use my. So that's how we're going to um, promote it among uh -huh. tourists first. But we, we do some um, promotion among Thai temple. When you go to Thai temple in the UK, mm -hmm. you can donate and use QR code payment. Mm -hmm. That's a th it's not easy to um, introduce them to the new things. So we right. take time. However, um, when I look at Western people and Eastern people, you know, all innovative ideas always come from them. Right. Isaac Newton, you know, like... Um, Many ideas started from there. Yes. But Asian people, we like to adopt it. Yes. We are so good, right? We're very good at adopting. We're very really good, yeah, adopting it. And make yeah. it our own. Yeah, and make it better. Absolutely. Don't you think so? It's a something, something. I yes. try to figure out <coughs> innovation, innovative ideas started from Western world. Mm -hmm. Adoption, expanding and make it really work. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's more from Asia? Like, you know, cryptocurrencies or blockchains. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting, right? Yeah, I, mean, I definitely, I mean, you, you, you make a good point that innovation doesn't necessarily happen here. Yeah. But the second phase of taking something that has been innovated and taking it to the next level or taking it, adopting it to the market. Faster here. Right? Faster. Mm -hmm. The pace here is much different, right? And so if you talk about QR payments... Has this caught on in the UK? Not really. Really? You cannot go there and say, okay, you're going to use QR code payment. Not at all. Not at all. So how do people pay there? Contactless. Contactless. Apple Pay. Apple. But you have to link to the with the card, right. right? Apple Pay, Google Pay. Right. That's the main thing. 
you can't go anywhere and okay, huh? <laughs> I want to pay QR code payment. But we right. try to um, bring my passion right. with the, my businesses. Yes. We plan to do hopefully next year, pay it forward. It's not new, new because I heard it 10 years ago mm -hmm. about suspended coffee. I mm -hmm. don't know if you heard about it. No. Okay, a suspended coffee, a same like what I try to do in right. the UK and Europe. When you go to the cafe or the restaurant, you pay for your own food and drink and you pay another portion for someone else. Mm -hmm. I call pay it forward. So I wish to see that you could go to a cafe or restaurant and pay for your own food or mm -hmm. coffee by Coco Pay. Yes. And you say, I want to pay for someone else. You don't know. And they're going to put a side of a Coco Pay, the, the logo, the flower, right. somewhere in the restaurant. And people see it and people who have no money, like homeless or single mom, single dad, mm -hmm. they can get my logo and they say, can I have whatever that they want to. That's paid for what? So basically, I, as a, go into the coffee shop, mm -hmm. I buy something. And you say Coco Pay. Coco Pay. And you are Coco Pay And then I say, I want to play it forward. Mm -hmm. So then someone else, Another 10 minutes later, them. walks into the coffee shop. They see the sign from our side that we participate, the shop or uh -huh. coffee, participate in Coco Pay, Pay It Forward. Mm -hmm. They come in and just ask for food and drink that someone else already paid for mm -hmm. them. I wish I want to make it happen. So how do you make it happen? Well, um, we have to go to the shopping cafes mm -hmm. who want to participate with us mm -hmm. and maybe start from just small numbers of mm -hmm. shop or cafe or maybe even Thai restaurants mm -hmm. and see how it goes. Because um, recently I was interviewed um, and uh, in the book of the Queen's Elizabeth, mm -hmm. um, what they call Platinum Jubilee book before she passed away. Uh -huh. And um, I have two pages in her book. Wow. Pay it forward. Yes. And my name and my history and what I want to see. And then uh, someone else in the charity uh, called National Emergency Trust. Mm -hmm. um, he's a chairman. He invited me to meet him already. So we are talking about how we use Coco Pay to do something like this, pay mm -hmm. it forward. Or receive the money for donation and this is distribute the money mm -hmm. to pay for the charity. So something like that, we need to let people know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. my passion, or what you call compassion, to yes. do this pay for what? Yes. And find someone who wants to do it together. I'm sure we will be I able like to. I like what you said. It's not your passion, it's your compassion, mm. right? Because actually it's your, your caring for others mm. that lead you to, to build Kogo Pay. We want people to see Coco Pay not just a fintech company, mm -hmm. just a company that people feel like, wow, we want to be part of it. Yeah. It will take time, but hopefully I can make it happen. Yeah. So I, I think this is um, very, this is mission focused, right? Mm. The mission is much greater than what you are building. Yeah. Do you know why I want to do this when people interview me? Please. When I studied at LSC, mm -hmm. this is a long time ago, the, the university uh, is near Hoban Station. Mm -hmm. Every day when I walk from my university to the tube station, mm -hmm. I saw lots of homeless people. Mm -hmm. That's not something, someone that I want to help. So in the beginning, day one, I say, how can I? Because I'm interested in blockchain first in 2016. Okay. So I'm interested in <coughs> um, technology first. And at that time, me and a few of my friends set up a group to study in blockchain, like how to make ID for homeless people <laughs> using blockchain, something like that. Mm -hmm. We always try to think about how to do it. So my mission is, how can we use technology that we did the research and study to help people? Like, how can I pick up the phone and just donate to whoever homeless people, but they don't have ID? That's the kind of thing that mm -hmm. i I interested in. That's how it started, how to use technology to help people. Can I use my mobile app whenever I have in the future to donate to uh, people? How how could you play it forward even more? So, for example, you talk about homeless people. Do they all have smartphones? No, but no. we can do something. Right. But some of them probably do. Like people who, um, I'm not sure when you in the UK, do you see people who sell magazine on the street? Yes. Big issues. Yes. Yeah, so you can donate to them. Uh -huh. And some of them have phone. Or they don't, um, at that time when I thought about it, you don't have to have phone, but you have QR code payment. Right. And if you link them with someone, they can go and maybe just get the credit from that particular wallet code to get food or to reimburse or withdraw cash somewhere. But it takes time. It's not easy when you talk about regulations. I'm, right. not, I'm not sure you listen to me in Bloomberg about some 
burdens in regulation. To yes. make this happen, it will take time. And we need to work well with the regulators. Correct. I mean, I, I would say my first time that I experienced um, what you're talking about, I was in Beijing. Oh, okay. And I saw a homeless person asking for money, and they had their QR code <laughs> printed. <laughs> yes. A and so it was very easy. They, they almost like mm. that they made it seamless. Yeah. So I think the goal is how will you make it, how could Coco Pay make it even more seamless for the homeless or, or the ones yeah. in need to actually access this? Yeah. In China, I believe that you don't need to have phone mm -hmm. now, right? You can just go to you use your face recognition Correct. somewhere and they can recognize who you are. Not just the KYC, right? Know yes. you're a customer. Correct. And you can get either food or hopefully in the future cash somewhere that, you know, you can trust or can work together. We have to do something. Well, I think we're getting there. Part of Kogo Pay, does it also have um, like a movement of money approach Oh, yeah, to yes, it? yes, yes. So, I mean, this is quite common in, in uh, with what we call OFWs, overseas foreign workers, especially in Philippines, who go and work, Yes. you know, in, in the Middle East or in other places. And, and obviously, if when you send money, if every time you have to pay forty dollars for TT transfer or, or Western Union takes a big cut. Right. So how are you helping to facilitate this? Now if you download a Coco Pay and mm -hmm. if you live in UK and Europe, you mm -hmm. can transfer the money within like one minute mm -hmm. to Thailand. So we start from the country where I was mm -hmm. born in Thailand, UK and Europe to Thailand. It's cheap and also very fast as well. Mm -hmm. That's the target of uh, people that I want to help as well, the migrants worker. Mm -hmm. I set up my company in Dubai now. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to help people like uh, Indian, mm -hmm. Pakistanis, Thai, Philippine, mm -hmm. Filipinos who are like a uh, majority of population in, in, in Middle East as mm -hmm. well. And I t always talk to them when I was on uh, Uber. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you send money home like into India or Pakistan? Mm -hmm. um, there's some Many times they have to go to the queue, to the exchange. Mm -hmm. And if it's less than 100 um, AED, yes. 1,000 baht, they pay very expensive, like 15 AED, 150 baht. Yeah. For us, we charge like 0.5%, mm -hmm. which is very little. So yeah, we, 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 we want to help them. This is people who work hard mm -hmm. and <laughs> send them money home. Yeah. That's we, uh, we want to include them in our ecosystem. Yeah, that I obviously this is like you, you touched on, you know, th the the area of compliance or, or that the government needs to be able to support or the regulator. Do you it, are you currently engaging with regulators and which regulators would you talk to? Is it in the UK or is it in Dubai? Is it in Thailand? We have to get the license <coughs> before we even started. It took me like almost two years to mm -hmm. get the license. We have the payment license in the UK with FCA. Okay. And we have another license in uh, Europe, in uh, Lithuania. There's with the Central Bank of uh, Lithuania called Electronic Money License, EMI. Okay. So we have to work closely with them. It's so hard work to mm -hmm. get the license as well. I don't have the license in Thailand, <coughs> yet, but I work with a partner who have the license. In Dubai, uh, we're in the process of getting... Mm -hmm. uh, one license, but we are looking for, um, I mean, we might work with the local partner who have the license, mm -hmm. like in Thailand, but we're going to get our license, but we take time mm -hmm. and need some money as well. Capital yeah. requirement is huge. Yeah, and I remember during the, um, the, the Bloomberg uh, session, you were talking about the difficulty mm -hmm. as a female entrepreneur to raise money. Two things that challenges me the most, the raising funds. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you, know, you read the article, it's like 2% of the funding from VC goes yes. to women. 98% yeah. go to men founders. There must be something, I know, not right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you address this? We have to work harder. Mm -hmm. We have to prove that we can do it. Mm -hmm. We take time, mm -hmm. but um, we just have to inspire other female founders. It would take time. Mm -hmm. we, have, we might have to work 10 times harder mm -hmm. to get uh, funded. Mm -hmm. But I, I, it happened to me. So, but we have to change it. I know a lot of people try to look at the statistic of 2% and 98%. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. But if you look back at the history in the UK, 100 years ago, women couldn't vote. Mm -hmm. 
when you look back, oh my goodness, it's just a small thing, right? How come we not allowed to vote? Right. And the same thing, I'm hope that what I'm doing now, in 50 years, 100 years, when all the women look back, how come you don't get funded? It's just... It, I think it must happen much faster than that. Okay, 20 years, <laughs> 10 years. I think that, that you know, the, the world re really needs to understand because if, you know, part of what, what we talked about there is, is, you know, why is gender always attached to these things? Yeah. Right? Like men and, and women getting funded, and why can't it just be about getting funded um, independently with, of what you are? Yeah, I think sometimes, um, did you remember I said about unconscious mm -hmm. bias? Yes. Yeah, when you talk to um, VC, because of mainly uh, mm -hmm. men dominated partners or associates who work in the venture capital, mm -hmm. the way we look at things, the women and men would be different, right? Mm -hmm. we, uh, we're different. So they might like someone aggressive, okay. Oh, okay, my relation is 100 million. When a woman would say, I believe that my relation is like this, like this. Or the way we doing business is probably different. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you, as a, as a founder of a company, actually have, it's a little bit different than other companies that I come across because you actually have a purpose. Yeah. And so you're very purpose driven. And so we, you talked about the purpose of, of what Coco Pay will do is helping, you know, transfer of money, is helping to play it forward. But you also have a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. Um, before I started my uh, own business, this mm -hmm. Coco Pay, mm -hmm. um, I had comfortable life. I'm not saying that I'm rich, rich, mm -hmm. but, you know, working right. in corporate CFO, consultant right but um i can i think i can do more i started from 2012 when i went to do a uh, homeless ministry in japan wow yeah T um t how many years ago almost 10 years yes ago. so wh what 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 is a homeless ministry in japan um because everyone probably like japan there's no homeless people I know, there, there are, right there are some okay 10 years ago i read articles somewhere like mm -hmm. You want to challenge yourself, do something out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I just wonder what is my comfort zone. Um, to do something that I haven't done before, but I love to do it. Mm -hmm. do when, I, um, when I stay in Thailand, when I was in university, I always volunteer to help um, talking to what they call like homeless children near mm -hmm. uh, Ho Lam Pong. You know mm -hmm. Ho Lam Pong yes. is a train station? Bus, yeah. That's something I like to do just for, okay, join them. But something that I want to do long term, like spend longer time, mm -hmm. explore what I like. Mm -hmm. so, and then I look at where should I go and then I have the leaflet about OMF. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Christian uh, mission, visionary group in, yes. in different countries. Yes. And I love Japan. So I chose, okay, well, let's go and see whether there's something in Japan that I, can, I could do. Mm -hmm. So I, I applied to, to be a part-time um, missionary in Japan to help the homeless people and also work in the church in uh, Tokyo and Ajikasawa. Wow. And um, that changed my life. That's I found a joy. This is a lot to do when, um, uh -huh. when I get older or when I retire. And also during the same years, I got invited by someone who, British charity, but help orphanage homes, different mm -hmm. places in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And then one of the directors asked me, Narissa, I have the free time magazine in the UK since 2000, right? Yes. Yeah, so do you want to um, go to this particular place and talk about orphanage home and people read it, they can do something? I said, yeah, of course I want to. So the same year I went to the orphanage home in Mesot. Oh, I've been and there. Yeah. Okay, you must come with me next time because okay. I want to build a new home for one orphanage home. They have the land, but uh, they need more money to help build the home. So I did that uh, with my mom. First yes. time with my mom and my children when they were little. Yes. So I found joy of doing this together. Especially my thought, like three generations, went somewhere together and do something together. Yeah. It's meaningful. That's meaningful. So I know that um, God has planned for me 12 years mm -hmm. to run the business. And after that, I want to be a full-time missionary or volunteering work, helping homeless and orphanage children. You talk about a 12-year period right now that until you are ready to go on your next kind of the, the mission that you have in life. How far are you down this 12-year this path? 
Coco Pain now is about five plus years. Mm -hmm. I have about six to seven years that I want to exit my business mm -hmm. um, and do something else that I aim from day one. <laughs> and I want that to do aim is yeah. I want to be become a full time missionary, helping mm -hmm. homeless and orphanage children. Already doing in part time. So I want to do that, continue doing that for a um, long term. Mm -hmm. So I might involve in business, but um, less low, lo not the CEO. Uh -huh. and I can do more volunteering work. So basically become a full-time missionary? Yes. Everyone know, my investor knows, uh -huh. my team know, you know now. I know now, and now <laughs> everyone else in the world knows yeah. um, who's watching this. She's going to become a missionary. Full-time. Full-time missionary. But I'm not setting up my own charities whatsoever. Uh -huh. I would go to support people who are doing well. That's what I did in the past with OMF in Japan uh -huh. or help orphanage children. Two homes, a few homes, three homes that I'm in particular helping. So could we say that you becoming a missionary means that Kogope was successful? Or is that completely independent of one another? Um... I think completely independence, right? Even mm -hmm. the I, I'm I hope I'm not sure <laughs> Coco Pay will go where I want to. Yeah. After I exit my business, so I have, um, you know, resources to do what I want mm -hmm. to. Like if I can exit successfully. So is is there like, in Coco Pay, do you have like a north star metric, something that you guys monitor on a daily basis? F for example, like, the number of play it forwards or or something like that. Um, pay it forward, we're going to do next year. So we're going to monitor on uh, how many people we can help. And mm -hmm. I, as of course, as how many uh, people who register on our app and mm -hmm. use it for um, to help them, like mm -hmm. migrants worker, send the money home, mm -hmm. or small mm -hmm. businesses using a QR code payment and yeah. receive the payment. And also how many people that receive pay it forward. Mm -hmm. some, something that someone else already pay for that. Mm -hmm. So that's the metric, and also, of course, for my lovely angel mm -hmm. investors and shareholders, yes. we need to grow the business, right. and the valuation will be higher. Yes. So the aim that I can exit, if it can be faster than seven years, yeah. lovely, but let's see what's God's plan. Yeah. Well, um, it sounds like uh, y you have a plan. Right, and that's much better than most people uh, in this world, right? But sometimes plan it doesn't go as planned. <laughs> Plans don't go as planned, but at least there's a plan, right? There are lots of challenges, yeah. unexpected challenges that I have to deal with every day. So you you're also a um, you're you're kind of regarded as a as a pioneer for women in tech, right? Do you have a message for, for, for women out there, no matter what stage of life that they're in? Um, you know, just words of, of encouragement or, or something like that. Like, what, what do you tell other founders out there or prospective entrepreneurs? It's not easy, I know. I've been through. But if you believe in what you're doing, find why you want to do it. The vision... And something like meaningful. Mm -hmm. And I always saying that worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. And because of all the time you will face challenges, especially unexpected challenges. Mm -hmm. But if you believe in what you're doing, something worth fighting for, mm -hmm. and you, you can face it day to day. Right. So meaningful and don't give up. Okay, if someone looking for investors, mm -hmm. like, you know, we've been through all this fundraising. Mm -hmm. Take, it takes time. Don't give up. And I always told my team, yes. <coughs> it like you, you have to kiss this many frogs. Mm -hmm. Kiss many frogs. Until you find your, your own prince. Mm -hmm. It will take time, but it will happen. Don't jump into something too quickly. Because, mm -hmm. you know, a long time ago it happened. Yes. Just wait for the right prince. He or she or they <laughs> will come. Prince as in not a male, just the prince as in... A figurative. Yeah, you know, like a yeah. story tale that we yes, really yes. the, the the frog and the prince. Yes, uh, yes. That's that's um, the message I want. Don't give up. Don't give up. You can do it. And start with why. Yeah, why? Why are you doing it? Yeah. It's worth to do it. So, I know you have an important role model in your life, or who was part of your life. Um, what did you learn from your mother? Oh, uh, my mom and my dad. We grown up in a like um, family that always give. Mm -hmm. 
So if my mom sees, saw someone, she was in heaven, saw someone, if he can help, she would mm -hmm. go and help. And I grown up being like that. So mm -hmm. I seen my parents doing that, and so I'd like to do the same. So, you know, I, I mentioned to you that we went to orphanage home together, me, mom, and my children, yes. my two boys, yes. Daniel and Gideon. Yes. So I want to pass on the love seed in my heart that uh -huh. I got it from my parents to my children. So hopefully they can pass it on it to other people as well. So then my mom quite strong. Yes. My dad working like um, uh, in the sometimes sometime other countries in the embassy. So he's uh -huh. not ho he wasn't home all the time. So my mom looking after us. She left the job and became a full time mom after mm -hmm. she had me. Mm -hmm. So that she's a role model, and then she did everything in the house, fixed the light and everything. I don't know how she could do it. She fixed right. all the pump, all the tap. She, she could do everything. And she gave me, um, um, how to say, freedom to think. Mm -hmm. um, i tell you one story. Please. When I was in the primary, sc uh, primary school, secondary school, yes. so three with uh, yeah, one of the uh, government school, and I want to go to, I want to try to, to go to another, the, the most famous high school in Bangkok, mm -hmm. Dream of mm -hmm. and, um, and that day, my, <coughs> um, my secondary school didn't allow us to go mm -hmm. because they didn't want the, the good <laughs> student to go to the, be, uh, the other school. Right. So at that time, I have to. Um, so I went, so they, in, the morn in, in the morning until 1 o'clock, they have the session that everyone has to come to register because to prevent them to go to the exam day. Right. So I went to the exam day. So I did two subjects out of three subjects. Mm -hmm. And I got the driver to drive me to um, my school. Yes. To say, hi, I'm here. Just last minute. Yes. If it's other mother, they won't mind. You take a risk of two go to subject exam from three. You, uh -huh. Some other parents say oh, you wouldn't be able to pass and go to that good school. Um, you know, that's a risk. If you couldn't go back in time mm -hmm. to the other school, you will fail. So you end up with no school to go. But my mom say, are you sure you want to do it? Okay, let's go and do it. So my mom gave me the freedom to think. Mm -hmm. She trusts me. So I try to do that to my children as well. That's how I became an entrepreneur. You take, took a risk, uh -huh. but you have to accept if it didn't go as your plan. Right. So that's I learned from how my mom. So calculated risk. And took responsibility. Responsibility and know the possible outcomes. And accept it if it didn't go through. But thanks God, <coughs> at that time, uh, my mom trusted me. And I, I passed the exam. I went to that one of the best mm -hmm. high school. And I still have two schools, but I have to give up one. And I went mm -hmm. to Demodom Suksa, one of the best times in my life. That's amazing. And that's uh, probably... Again, another sign of your your kind of determination, yeah, to to pursue what you think is is the right path for you. Yeah, um, I have another role model, but not from my family. I don't know, you know, Sir Tim Berners Lee. They call him Tim B L. I don't know him yet. Oh, you see, he's an inventor of the World Wide Web. Oh, oh, okay. See, I've heard of that www thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was an inventor. Uh -huh. if, um, but he gave it to all people. It's free, no patent, no loyalty fee. Mm -hmm. Imagine if he charged every one of us mm -hmm. with the patent of a server, loyalty right. fee like Microsoft. You have to pay for the Microsoft. Server. But he wants everyone to use it, to make it, um, you know, to use it more for the public. Right. No one knew him, right? but I, I read about him many years ago. I listened to what he talked. He's my role model. You invent something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a starting of, you know, the generation that we grown up with, right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't do it for himself. So he thought of a uh, public use. And, you know, people can use technology to do more instead of keep it for mm -hmm. yourself and earn from it. That he's my uh, role model of, you know, tech. Guy. Right. So maybe you're going to be the inventor of the, you know how in Google they have the, the search and I feel lucky? You're going to be the one who puts the play it forward button into maybe all technology uh, so. products out there. I hope so. Yeah. 
But I want to be someone like, you know, someone who think of other people more than themselves and thought about how technology can grow even beyond. You could do it by giving for free or, you know, like, not thinking about themselves. He can make a lot of money. Imagine that. Uh -huh. We have to, every time we go, whoop, right. search engine, you have to pay or World Wide Web, you have to pay. But he didn't think of himself. I, 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 I never met him in person. I wish one day I can meet my role model. <laughs> This has been amazing. Um, before we kind of wrap this up, I want to do a rapid fire session with you. Ooh, okay. Are you down for that? Ooh, okay. All right. Uh, don't 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 get too excited. Panic. <laughs> My favorite question is: What is your guilty pleasure? Is it food, entertainment, mobile gaming? Every Friday night. Yes. I'm watching Korean series yeah. and drink. I'll go. Yeah. Uh, what they call soju. Soju. <laughs> Wow. Every Friday night. Every Friday night. Don't talk to me. Don't. It's my time. Don't email Dr. Narisa on Friday night. And drink. <laughs> and, and with soju. Soju. So obviously you talked about the, the people that have had a big impact on your life. Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone else that may have uh, influenced you in becoming you? If I say God, would it be too religious? No. Yeah, no. okay. God is... Um, he is my everything. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm doing work, um, and also because of the love that I got it from mm -hmm. him, so I pay it forward, like the grace from God, so I pay it forward to other people, and then I want to help people. Speaking of God, when was the last time you used hard cash? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Hard cash? Hard money, you know, like oh, the currency, money. paper. Hmm. Really it? It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it's in the wall. Yeah. We really live in a digital it? world, don't we? Yeah. Oh, when I give a tip when in the you hotel. Give a tip. Uh, you can still cannot, right? You have to figure out how to do it. Yes. When you, you know the people when you come to a door man and... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe everyone should have a little Co Kogo Pay QR yeah, code on them. What should them. we do? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is the best thing about being Thai? Sawadika. You know, everywhere I go, uh -huh. I've been in a lot of places. Yes. California, Dubai, yes. Vienna. When I say I'm Thai. Yes. Oh, Sawadika. Yes. You know, it helped me in my business. You guys in Thailand, you're doing so well. Yes. In tourism, what, hospitality, everything. Yes. I'm so proud to be Thai. And um, I think I said somewhere before that um, I got two role models. So I put the picture of these two persons mm -hmm. in my book. In my notebook, when I, you know, when I yes. have a meeting, I note things down. Um, one is the Queen Elizabeth. Correct. And especially the last picture that she took, sh shake hand with the previous Prime Minister, Liz. Uh. You know, like, yes. she, you yeah. can see her, her hands, uh, like, bruises. I'm oh. sure that they, they did yeah. some. Uh -huh. At last minute of her life, she's yes. still um, working for. Still for doing service. Services. And my late king as well. The yeah. picture that's I think I was lucky to born in the country. These two countries I you yeah. know, spend half of my life in each. Um I got two role models who um I use the word selflessness. Mm -hmm. You know, they they did yes. for their own people and that's I'm lucky to be born in Thailand as well. I'm so proud to be Thai. Speaking of Thai, what's your favorite Thai food? I don't say Pad Thai. Gui <laughs> Chai. <laughs> <laughs> Gui Chai. <laughs> You know Gui Chai. I, I love Gui yeah, Chai. Yeah, yes. And um, what was the last app that you downloaded? Oh my goodness, what's the last app? Kalim. Kalim? Do you know Kalim? Like, like Uber in um. Oh, yes. Dubai. Kalim, yes. <laughs> yes. I have to use it for my business. I travel a lot for businesses. That's the last one. Any message that you want to share with the audience before we sign off? Um... I want to encourage people, inspire people to pay it forward and do something for other people. I think the world now, you know, like lots of people, you challenge the people who sometimes you feel like, you know, they don't think of other people, take advantage of, you know, what, think of themselves too much. Mm -hmm. Doing something meaningful together. And I, if I can be of any help, Coco Pay can do anything. We are happy to. If I can help any businesses in Thailand and Asia, because I'm in UK and Europe and mm -hmm. we expand to Middle East. If it can be um, someone, something for you, or to help anything, or you have any idea to pay it forward together with us, please let us know. I want to hear all the ideas and do something together, like-minded people. 
That's amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Narisa. Thank you for having me. It's, it's my pleasure to be here it's been a in pleasure. Thailand. In, in a, absolutely, to, to, to be able to find you here and, and during your short trip. And I know you're going back to UK uh, the day after tomorrow. So thank you so much. And um, you know what? Play it forward. Share this episode with uh, someone that you think mm -hmm. can benefit from it. Thank you.